What do you think has been Epic Games' biggest missed opportunity over the years? Today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with many YouTube channels, and welcome back to another Reply Room video, guys, where I ask you guys to jump into the Discord, which is in the pinned comment description down below, and I ask you guys to tell me something. Respond to me. Let's make a video together. We will be making a video with community reactions, and this week, I had this to say. What do you think has been Epic's biggest missed opportunity? We're going to be talking about that in just a second. Now, guys, you might notice I'm a little bit lower than usual. My baby is right next to me sleeping. So I'm going to be talking in a little bit of a lower tone of voice. Guys, I need you to know, please comment down below. Let me know if this is not something that you want from my videos. If you want me to just take the time and do them when I can be a little bit more energetic as usual, please always looking to better the channel. So please, please be honest if this isn't something that you would like to see moving forward with the channel. It's every once in a while. Now I do this on a couple other channels. I make videos with a little bit more of a lower tone because this little one is next to me and she's so beautiful right now. But anyways, guys, my apologies for the long video, let's get into it. Chapter 3 not being 8 seasons long. I don't know about y'all, but Chapter 3 was my favorite chapter, and I really saw a lot of potential with it having such awesome seasons, every single one being my favorite to be honest, and Chapter 4 Season 2 and 3 would have been in Chapter 3, and I loved Chapter 4 Season 2, so that whole season in Chapter 3 would have been so cool, but they decided to end the chapter with 4 seasons. If Mega and Chapter 4 Season 1 were part of Chapter 3, Chapter 3 would go down as peak Fortnite, 1000%. And I can't imagine if, let's say if, because that would mean Donald Mustard would still be part of everything, right? If Donald Mustard did the storyline how he wanted to, and we got Fracture how Donald Mustard wanted to, could you just imagine the potential right there with the nothing, with the Herald? Chapter 3 would have absolutely gone down as the greatest chapter in Fortnite history and peak Fortnite if Donald Mustard was in charge of it, and not to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy where it's like, oh, Tim Sweeney, Wah! you know? But wholeheartedly, I believe with Chapter 3 being 8 seasons long, that would have been peak Fortnite. Ooh, Primal. And I have an explanation for it. Epic's biggest missed opportunity would have been Primal Chapter 2 Season 6 because for one, they replaced Salty Towers with Bony Burbs, which pretty much nobody liked, and replaced Colossal Coliseum with Colossal Crops, which for me was okay, but I'm pretty sure people liked the Coliseum better, and changed part of Weeping Woods, which I was fine with, and got rid of snipers and replaced them with bows, which, in my opinion, the only good ones was the Shockwave and the Grappler Bow, and the Makeshift and Primal weapons were bad, Primal being better than Makeshift. Okay, so yeah, they definitely could have made the theme a little bit better, they could have made the POIs a little bit better, but... I mean, that would kind of be changing the entire season, if that makes sense. There were a lot of changes that typically would be good, but they just didn't necessarily hit the mark for the majority of the player base this time around. Not adding randomized maps after OG, and specifically keeping around old maps. Every other BR has multiple maps. For instance, looking at PUBG, they have both the original map, Aringal, which I might be saying wrong, sorry about that, which is constantly being updated, and the original version of the map, Aringal Classic. Besides that, they have four other maps. Apex in total has 11 different maps. Epic could have had the chapter 1 to 5 maps all in the game at once, and have remixed the classic versions of each map. The classic version would rotate between different updates of the chapter, and the remix versions could either be like OG, where nothing gets removed, and other subtle changes, or they should just pick up from where they left off. Clearly, people like the older gameplay, and the other games have found a way to permanently keep it in the game while pleasing new players. This seems like such an easy fix for appeasing people who prefer Chapter 1 gameplay, while also preventing it from getting stale. Now, I believe the biggest solution to this is Rebirth. I believe that Fortnite Reload is the perfect way to do it because I'm not going to get into the entire conversation. We've talked about this in the reply rooms and actually, <laughs> Michael, I am not sure if it was us, but I think it was where we were talking about this, oh, the entirety of OG getting stale. I still do believe that to be the case, but if Epic Games were to introduce rotating maps through rotating seasons and not having it necessarily be the same all the time and being able to play from the what? 20 something seasons that we've been on rotating maps like that i would be definitely here for that i don't think that would get stale especially if they were to update the regular br map i like the idea of rotating maps the thing i don't like is just having og fortnite there and that's what would get stale if it never changed not enough map changes for og they could have brought back pois from season 8 the volcano sunny steps lazy lagoon season 9 neo tilted slipstreams mega mall Season X Rift Zones, Starry Suburbs, and all other peak map changes, but instead they just added Season 5 and added a small amount of changes, which was disappointing. I understand where they were going for the whole time, but the problem is, and the Fortnite community does this a lot, they hype themselves up 
for, and the leakers do this as well, for something that Epic Games doesn't necessarily plan on bringing to the game. If you remember, I don't remember if it was a rumor or if it was leaks, but it was going around that every week or every few days we would be going into a new Chapter 1 season. OG came out, it wasn't that, the map was obviously a letdown. I do think that it also was a missed opportunity, as you said, Apollo, like bringing back the volcano and some other, like, I would have loved to see Rift Zones personally, that was a little bit disappointing for me, but uh, I guess it is a missed opportunity, but I still think they did a fantastic job with OG to expand in the gameplay and experiment on AI enemies more. See, back in Chapter 2, I was always excited for the next season because I was always curious on what AI experimentations they were testing to introduce in the next season to spice up gameplay. When Chapter 3 hit, the AI felt kind of slow and lacking because, okay, you're testing gameplay mechanics, which is good, but despite that type of, excuse me, but despite that, a type of AI I would say is a missed opportunity is to make interesting AI boss enemies like a caretaker. That's true. There's nothing really about the bots that make me excited for them. The caretaker is a perfect example. I'd have to really think off the top of my head. There were some bosses, like I enjoyed Iron Man because of the chaotic and he had the Unibeam, it was something unique to fight. Bosses like that I liked, but it wasn't really anything like, oh my god, this is fun. To use the Caretaker as an example, I think the Caretaker was an absolute blast. I enjoyed fighting in the sideways. I thought the entire thing was really cool, how it grabbed you into its bubble. So I actually do agree with this. I would like to see them experiment with more things like AI, but hey, you know what? This is something that they could absolutely still do down the road. Geno, he felt extremely underwhelming, and when they added him to the game, they just didn't give us any story about him. The way they handled him before also felt very flawed. He was hyped up to be some big evil guy, but he kind of died the first time we encountered him. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is because Donald Mustard, like in the storyline, took a back seat. Donald Mustard was leaving. He couldn't figure out the entire story that he wanted to implement into the game. That wasn't possible. I believe that's the reason. But, I mean, it doesn't make it any, any more less of a missed opportunity, right? This still ultimately was a huge missed opportunity because everybody was looking forward to Geno. For me specifically, I think that nothing was more of a missed opportunity than Geno. But, hey, both of them are very, very sad. But hopefully Charlie Wen gets a good story going on with Geno throughout Chapter 6. Okay, <laughs> usually I skip these ones. But, of course, I have to keep the no sex in Fortnite Festival. That is very true. I don't understand why Epic Games didn't add in sex into Fortnite Festival. That was a huge missed opportunity. Could you just imagine jamming out to some of your favorite Fortnite tracks or just favorite songs in general while you're hitting Cammy from the back at the same time? Like, that would be absolutely incredible. Let's continue on to Ascension. The entirety of Vibin. While I didn't hate this season like others did, and Reality Falls and Rave Cave remain two of my all-time favorite POIs, the rest of the season felt underwhelming. They had so much potential to go all out with the party and summer theme of the season. We could have gotten a baseball stadium, water park, casino and resort, and many more cool POIs to make that season feel like a summer party. And what we got for the rest of the season, outside of shuffled shrines, was just a bunch of POIs randomly shifting every day, every game. We also had a serious missed opportunity for a concert to happen, rumored to have been Lady Gaga at the time. The sanctuary was also decorated with vibrant colors for the summer, and a lot of that was removed shortly after. Many of these things combined, as well as the season dragging on for longer than usual, sadly killed the one thing the season was supposed to embrace, the vibes. I wholeheartedly agree with this. The, especially when it comes to the shifting POIs, the idea for that is phenomenal, but the problem was so much of it kind of just felt the same. You know, there were some cool POIs when it first got introduced, it was crazy. Like every single game, we would have a different POI. We didn't know what was going to be there when we landed there. I love that idea, but the problem is they reused so many things and then I got used to it and then nothing, they didn't change enough for me to really go, hey, this is amazing, but you're right. There could have been a concert. There could have been a live event. There could have been so many things done in Vibin that would have made the season one of the greats that it was. So, I mean, like the way that the community looks back on it right now, it seems like it was a great season, but you are totally right about this one. Side grades should have had a lot more focus on them at some point. Imagine being able to change your assault rifle to a hammer assault rifle for faster damage and tighter spread. Your striker burst AR fires only two round bursts. Why not make it shoot a third round burst? Or why not make your hand cannon into a mammoth pistol? If side grades got even half the depth weapon mods get, it would have been really allowed a lot of guns to be in the game. Just imagine being able to change the pump to a thunder pump, or a ranger shotgun, or an infiltrator pump shotgun while not clogging the loop pool. And it's not like it's too inconvenient either since people are willing to mod their uncommon burst to have a laser attachment. Basically, side grades were a missed opportunity. Especially with the nuts and bolts. It wasn't like the crafting in Season 6. It was done right. It was nice. It was easy if you had some nuts and bolts. I don't even think that you need a mod bench for it. 
I thought the crafting the way it was, and I believe it was in chapter two, season seven and eight, that was modding done right in my opinion. And I agree, it wouldn't it wouldn't change the loot pool, it wouldn't clog the loot pool, and it would make people a lot happier. And for those of you who talk about getting bored in this game and the game getting stale for you, you'd be constantly going up against people with different weapons that you're not used to having. If you want to go as far as having a dragon's breast shotgun, someone who can set fire to you, I think that would change the gameplay enough to really, really help this game become a lot more interesting than some people find it to be. Fortnite's storyline in Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 Before Chapter 4, the storyline was very engaging and easy to follow, especially with the fun in-game live events. Nowadays, the storyline is bland and confusing and overall just very underwhelming. If Chapter 4 had a good storyline and live events, it would definitely be much more appreciated and loved by the community. Now, like we were talking about earlier, Chapter 4 was supposed to be part of Season 3, which was Donald Mustard's story. That's, of course, that does make it a missed opportunity, right? I definitely, definitely agree with this. There's just an unfortunate reason behind it. But the idea with the, especially the Rift Warden Stellan, the Shapeless Man Geno, there is so much that I really, really wish that we could have explored because the storyline was so engaging, especially in season one. Not so much season two, but you get what I'm saying. It was, it was, it, it all, it had all the potential in the world. So I would say out of everything, like honestly, yeah, it, it might be the storyline of chapter four. I would have to say Fortnite's biggest missed opportunity was Augments. At the beginning of Chapter 4 Season 1, Augments were absolutely amazing and made the season super fun, and even though Epic didn't do so well with the Augments in later seasons of Chapter 4, the Augments still made Chapter 4 one of the best times for this game in my opinion. Though there was room for improvement like when those legendary Augments were leaked in the files but never actually got put in the game. I like the idea of having lots of rare Augments that you can get that is overpowered but again hard to get. I also particularly like, excuse me, I also particularly the fact that since augments are random, they give more r randomness and luck like the whole looting system and give you a reason to use your gold. Also, they could have experimented with more augments and make them even more fun than even the ones in Chapter 4 Season 1. I just feel like Epic could have made augments a permanent part of the game because they were truly unique, fun, and had lots of potential. I couldn't agree more, it still shocks me to this day that people are okay with the game without augments. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to laugh out loud, but... That was, I, I, I loved them. I completely agree with everything that you said. And a, a missed opportunity in general was just not having the fun augments like in Chapter 4 Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3 really lacked on the fun augments. Like I was just saying with side grading, it added a new bunch of like uniqueness to the game, which was something that a lot of players really need now because they're feeling bored with games. Fights would feel different. You would never know what somebody has. Nobody would know what you have. And it would really, really, augments made for such a fun gaming battle royale experience that I will forever miss. I'd say the lack of meta defining items since chapter 4 season 2. Back then we had the kinetic blade and hammer which were fun and OP items which related to the theme of the season and are one of the first things I think of when I look back on the season. I feel like we haven't had a good meta defining item since then which made the seasons blur with each other. I think they were trying to get back on this trend with the Doom Fist and the Zeus Thunderbolt, but they were nerfed to the ground and in some cases made these items useless, the Thunderbolt. And for seasons like Chapter 5 Season 1 and Chapter 3 Season 3 with no real meta defining them, they have become some of the most forgettable seasons. This definitely does play a part of it, but I don't know how much I really agree with it. I don't think it's really a big deal. I think you just need- but then again you do need something to stand out, right? I understand this. I, I would love to know what you guys think about this one down below because it makes all the sense in the world, but I don't know. Can the season get by being memorable without any memorable items? I'd really have to sit down and think about that one. So thank you for this. That's very interesting. Now, this still was a missed opportunity to have a, an item to remember by each season. Crossovers not having their own exclusive mode when they are part of a theme of a season. With crossover items being separate from Battle Royale, you could do stuff more freely that can appease the audience instead of items disrupting Battle Royale's gameplay from people that just want to play Battle Royale without a broken item being 90% of the reason why they lose games. Separating the loot pool in general between pubs, comps, and other modes adds different approaches that can make everyone happy instead of playing a season that makes it feel forced to how you play the game. But the problem is, that's Fortnite. I am so for separating casual and competitive, I think that is the correct thing to do, but once you start separating it more and more, that I don't think is a good idea. That At that point, if you don't want to play with any like wacky, crazy items and you don't want to play competitive either, 
at this point, I think you should look for a new game to play. Fortnite might not be for you, but I do understand what you're saying. Sometimes these crossovers could have their own mode. For example, Marvel Knockout. I would love to see that just have its own mode, period. But for the most part, I don't think you should continue separating the loophole more than just between pubs and competitive. Just to pick an interesting one, I'd say last season. Myths and Mortals could have and should have been much better. Though it wasn't bad season, it wasn't anything incredible. The Greek theme was one of the most important things to the game because of the islands being named after the Greek gods thing, not to mention how close to home it was for Charlie Wen too. Map changes were pretty good, but other things lacked. We only got three Greek items because they needed to keep the amount for the, for the gunplay and even those got vaulted for the Avatar The Last Airbender event. Besides the battle pass, we didn't get too many Greek characters. And even there, Korra stole the place of Ares. Not to mention some of the weak bonus styles or even concept to game transitions. Then the story. Though a step up, it was still bare bones. To its core, it was still just a let's build a team against a threat and just gets dealt with simply than get rid of the team. Not to mention the pointless side of quests sometimes. Then they just felt like leaving after we disrespected Zeus by that humiliating defeat due to his dumbness. Even the return of Midas was just brushed aside as he left immediately while not answering a lot of major questions too, but still giving us new ones. And even though the mini event was cool, it won't make up for the whole story being average at best. I know we say that Epic Games is in a transition period and all, but how long will that last? How many mediocre stories do we have to watch slowly getting better if they do? And if they really are having trouble managing all this stuff, then I don't just throw out the possibility one of the most important season themes just to give Charlie an early kickoff with it. They are the ones that decided to pressure themselves with the metaverse while also having to make yearly chapters. This just shows how sadly as of now things aren't as great as it could be when we had Donald Mustard, and how the season themes get overshadowed by collabs and needing to get content out ASAP. P.S. To clear these up, I am not saying metaverse equals bad, I am just saying that it causes downsides for things such as this. I wish that I had something to add to this, but this is as well said as you could possibly get. I really appreciate this entire comment here, Mark, because I agree with all of it completely. You're right. I cut up, I'm cutting Epic Games a lot of slack right now, especially for the everything that you mentioned over here, right? I wholeheartedly believe Chapter 6 will be better. At this point, the when I'm going to give them the cutoff and say like, hey, okay, the gameplay and the story is, or not the gameplay, the storyline is unacceptable, but then again, that gets into the, enti into the entire entitled conversation, which I'm not saying you're necessarily right or wrong for that. I'm going to give them till chapter six. If the story's not better by chapter six, then I will be okay. Epic Games, you've done too much. What's going on? This is ridiculous. The fans aren't happy. That's where I'm going to give them some slack up until I'm giving them this entire chapter, but that's just one part of what you said. You're totally right. I Everybody was so excited for so long and wanted a Greek mythology season for a very long time. And it was good. It was. But it was, as you said, a missed opportunity. Not having a corrupted version of the Seven Return, that could have led to one of the best stories ever told in gaming. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We never knew that they were actually going to come, right? But it was kind of suggested to be the case and i would have loved to see the seven come back as evil versions of themselves i completely agree that could have led to one of the best stories ever told in gaming they always could still come back and i'm curious as to if charlie when will actually ever bring them back i don't really know at this point but hey we're in a little bit of a rough patch with the story still. Stellan's storyline garlo i knew you'd be talking about this one man i knew you were gonna write this one if you were coming down Chapter 4 Season 1's story was so interesting it actually got me excited for the new quest to release and find out more about the Shapeless Man, especially since it was practically confirmed to be the Nothing. We could have gotten a great little last reality chapter, but instead the storyline was all over the place. But it seems like they're bringing the Shapeless Man back now with the Wanderer, so maybe they can deliver. Well, that's all speculation, but like I was talking about early on in the video, I completely agree. Chapter 4 Season 1's story was so interesting. I didn't necessarily do the quests, I do them through YouTube, I know, that's weird, but still. I was so excited at the idea of the Shapeless Man, the Nothing, Geno, and this was absolutely 100% a missed opportunity. Kato Thorn, the guy is a literal time traveler. He could have gone back in time and used weapons and items we hadn't seen before or have seen in the past. The story behind him would have made him such a great villain for the game with the potential he could have had. I always wonder if Kato Thorn was part of Donald Mustard's story, or like part of Donald Mustard's vision, because something that I talked about is like, before Donald left, I would imagine that he had a little bit of a roadmap for where things were headed when he gave to Tim Sweeney and gave to Charlie Wen, but 
I, it's you're right it was a missed opportunity i liked what we got from him the problem with me mostly is him dying off screen dying through a challenge or dying through a voice quest but i i do like the fact that he brought back some fan favorite weapons the vault and that whole season was great but they could have done more with Kato Thorne. You are absolutely right. The Seven and their storyline. The Seven were getting built up into really good and strong characters, and as soon as Chapter 4 started, they were forgotten. People speculated that they would have been carried on, with the statue of the woman thought to be the leader of the Seven, and the other statues being the old Seven, and they just forgot about them. To be honest, everything in the story was forgotten and reset. The new leader of the story is way worse, and Donald should have stayed. People say it takes a while for his vision to come through, but no matter what is performing, it is way worse than what Donald did. So far, it is way worse, and it's not comparable. I'm personally waiting on Chapter 6 to start judging on that storyline, but in the meantime, you're right. Unfortunately, Donald is gone, though, and I I do think that Charlie Wen will, with through time, at least tell his own story. He has a lot of credentials, and I think that he can, he can absolutely tell his own story as time goes on, but the Seven and their storyline is something that we will all miss, and not bringing them back, or not continuing them, or not having a conclusion absolutely was a missed opportunity. Chapter 3, not having more seasons. Personally, if I find this a missed opportunity because the chapter had a lot of potential, and maybe would have had an event where Chrome 7 were revealed, potentially being the main villains of Chapter 3. Yes, this is exactly, I, I agree doc, the exact same thing we were talking about earlier. Chapter 3 being 8 seasons could have been fantastic. We could have gotten the storyline of the Chrome 7 and even maybe the corrupted version of the 7s as we talked about, but Chapter 3 would have been absolutely goaded, man. It still was. It was still fantastic. We just had that little vibin' hiccup, right? But guys, speaking of vibin', I want to bring you to this video on screen right now. It is reacting to Cypher BK's brand new video, and I have the absolute correct takes on when Fortnite's Prime actually was. I will see you over there, guys, or in the next video. Take care.